I have a privacy focused social media app that's similar to WhatsApp and Telegram that I've spent around six years programming. It's called BraxMe. Although I'm the beacon of privacy on the internet, people continue to say, I don't trust your app. Yet the apps that many of you trust, like WhatsApp, Telegram, and even Signal, which are similar to BraxMe, do untrustworthy things. So I thought about open sourcing this app and see how that impacts me personally and you, the community. Let me explain my thought process and my final decision. Stay tuned. I built this fairly elaborate app. It's called BraxMe. Originally, this was intended to be just a simple thing for doing encrypted messaging, and I started working on it in 2013. But over the years, it has evolved. I think it has a unique place in the world because of its focus on privacy and not just encryption, which of course it has a lot of. I'm just an individual with no marketing money, so basically, the app has just been promoted by word of mouth and my social media presence. And honestly, today, I run the app as a community service and not as a money maker. But it's been around for four years and it has a worldwide community on it already. And the people on it are focused on privacy. When the idea of Linux phones came out, I realized that there are limited solutions available to this community for doing safe social media and messaging. And this same community believes in the same things I do. Privacy. However, I always get this question of trust, even though I've done even live streams showing the innards of the app and the encryption. The problem of doing open source affects me directly through my income stream. Going open source stops me from generating an income from licensing the software, which I've done over the years, to the enterprise market. So this is no small matter to me. But on the other hand, I thought that perhaps many of you will appreciate what this will do for the community. If this app is an open source project, perhaps people will contribute towards making the project even better. And it should eliminate the trust question since it bears the truth for everyone to see, good or bad. But what's so different from this app compared to others like Telegram and WhatsApp? Ah, there are huge differences. One just starting with sign up. Braxme is truly focused on pseudo anonymity in social media. It doesn't require a phone number as your login, like WhatsApp, Telegram, and Signal. It doesn't allow uploading of contact lists. Those two items alone break my privacy in a big way. WhatsApp, Telegram, and Signal all use phone numbers for identification. Phone numbers are not private by any means. Any government or even a telecom carrier can identify who is assigned a phone number and match it to their device. The other problem is the promotion of contact lists, which was used initially to make apps viral. If you put your phone number in and it is recognized based on someone's uploaded contact list, then the metadata already points to your real name and is an immediate relationship map. A contact list reveals so much information about you and your circle. And you don't have control over it since other people will upload your name and phone number without your knowledge. You may think that your communications are secure, but simply knowing who you're talking to in a time pattern of communication is sufficient metadata to guess connections and even what you're talking about. This alone is a breach of privacy. I signed up to Telegram to try it out. It asks for your phone number and doesn't really give you a choice. I didn't use it, so I just left the app on. And hours later, I get a message. And it was from my brother. And he says, it's nice to see you in Telegram. This is zucked up, people. Is that privacy for you? He found me automatically because I got flagged as being present in his contact list. Obviously, he had my phone number. Then, many of you trust WhatsApp, which fingerprints your device and knows your phone number and matches that to your Facebook account and your Instagram account. It can then match associations not only inside WhatsApp, but throughout all of Facebook properties, which are those three. And yet I can't believe this is an app that people trust, even though A, 
WhatsApp is not open source. B, Facebook clearly states in their end user license agreement that the metadata is captured across platforms. And C, it is owned by the biggest invader of privacy in the world, Zuck himself. And what's the point of secure messaging if certain info like a browser fingerprint and IP address tracking is part of the activity? Braxme tracks neither. What about encryption? Braxme is a little bit different because it uses symmetric encryption throughout. And this includes end-to-end -end encryption. My philosophy there was my worry about quantum computers and how they can be used to break asymmetric encryption which is the basis of private public keys. Asymmetric encryption, which is used as the main technology in WhatsApp, Telegram, and Signal, is convenient, but ultimately it can be breakable by upcoming technology with quantum computing. The main difference in how Braxme works is that in essence, it is mostly social media, but the key focus is always pseudo anonymity. You assign yourself an identity and there's no way to verify your actual identity. You can protect your account with auth apps like Google Authenticator or Authy. File storage and messages are all protected with forward secrecy. There's triple encryption happening all the time. Even the database data is encrypted three times so that I don't have to worry about even hackers getting a hold of the database. Because of this encryption, the database is not searchable by content. I think what I created here is value for the community. Many features could have been in the app and I took it out because it was not contributing to privacy just for the popularity of the app. Now, ultimately, it's a tough decision for me to go open source because it's irreversible. But in the end, I thought that this move might make more people use it. So that's a positive thing. So starting this past weekend, I'm foregoing my licensing income from this product and have released it as open source. You will find the source code under my name, Rob Braxman, on GitHub. And may I remind you again that WhatsApp is not open source and only the front end is open source on Telegram. This open source release of Braxme is the full app with backend and databases. I will work on getting it listed in various open source app stores and get it visible on FA sites. And hopefully you will share in promoting that. There's an iOS and Android version of the front end and the front ends just give it a swipe interface and notifications as well as access to the camera and photos. It runs great on Linux, including Ubuntu Touch. I used Web App Creator to make a clickable link for it on Ubuntu Touch. In the meantime, go ahead and try the app at brax.me. You can reach me there as at Rob Braxman. My link, rob.brax.me, automatically starts a chat with me, and I even have my e-commerce store on there. And check out my other products there, including my Brax Wi-Fi router, Bytes VPN, and security products. This is my Christmas present to all of you, and I hope it gives you value. And thank you for watching. Thank you.